If you're looking for a cost-effective alternative to Zoom, then you may want to check out Vivo Meetings. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to the platform, talking about its features, its functionality, uh, and running through some of the settings as well so that you can get the most out of it. It's not going to be a complete full tutorial. However, it should give you enough of an idea to decide if it's something that you want to check out for yourself. And of course, if you do, you'll find a link to get a free trial down in the description. Now, before we get into it, I do need to say right off the bat that this is a sponsored video paid for by Vivo Meetings. However, However, all of the views that I'm going to be expressing in here are my own. And as you'll see, I'm going to be sharing just the uh, the basics and the, uh, the the facts of, you know, what it can do and what it can't do, sharing the pros and cons as well, and who it's right for and who maybe it's not going to be right for as well. So with that said, let's just dive straight in, shall we? And I'll start with giving you a very brief introduction to the interface. We'll come back to this a little bit later, uh, but this is just to illustrate the fact that we are talking about a meeting platform. So it's going to have all the usual things that you would expect to see. Uh, we've got the bar down at the bottom here where you can, uh, do things like activate breakout rooms. We've got the recording uh, streaming as well. I'll come back to that. It's grayed out in here. It's not activated on this particular call that I've got running. Uh, we've got a whiteboard built in, screen sharing, obviously, uh, muting mic, uh, choosing the microphone and the camera settings down at the bottom there as well. Uh, then we've got things like raising hands and so on. So uh, interactivity with participants. Uh, and then you've got the usual things here. So we've got a participants window that pops out, a chat window as well, and a place for polls as well, and a place obviously to invite people to the meeting as well. So uh, all of this is just to give a brief introduction to say uh, that, you know, it's basically a meeting platform, as you will be familiar with. In many cases, they're so ubiquitous these days. We've also got different views here. So you can have a sidebar view bottom bar view and a few different layouts but we'll come back to those in a moment before we actually get into the interface though i do just want to run through some of the settings um, and maybe just touch on as well why i'm actually you know engaged in this collaboration why it was something that i was interested to uh, take on because uh, i do get approached quite often by companies asking if i want to test stuff out whether it's software hardware or platforms or whatever and i don't normally take people up on these uh, uh, these offers however in this case, I was quite compelled to uh, check out Vivo meetings just because it happened to come at around the time there was a lot of discussion around uh, Zoom alternatives in amongst the members of the Take One Tech Academy. And we've just been having conversations around uh, basically alternatives for Zoom webinar, then also looking at ways to get transcripts out of Zoom and a few other different options and talking about the cost of Zoom. Uh, when you start adding in multiple different add-ons, uh, it can become quite a, a large monthly expense. So it was just sort of top of mind as uh, at the time that I was approached by Vivo. And so I thought, well, let me just check it out then. Uh, and I, as I say, I was quite pleasantly surprised by what I found. Uh, there was also another feature that was really compelling to me, which was around the uh, resolution of the camera feed that you get, because there is this issue when you are using virtual cameras from platforms like Ecamm Live to go into Zoom. So just to explain what that is, if you are new to the channel, you don't know, then all of my videos are made in one take uh, with no edits using Ecamm Live. And Ecamm Live is basically uh, a live video production software. There is another software called OBS, which is cross-platform for Mac and PC. But what this allows me to do is do things like, you know, switch over to this scene. This is just me pressing a button on my desk, switches over to this scene. I could switch over to uh, a different camera angle if I wanted. Here we go. It would help if that was in focus but you get the idea. I can switch back and forth between these things and do all of that live. Well, uh, if you want to do that into your meetings as well, um, then you can use what's called a virtual camera. And that's fine when you are just using your camera going into the platform. But sometimes if you've got writing on the screen, like if I go over to my uh, scene with the settings here, uh, if you wanted all of this to be read on the screen uh, in your virtual meeting, then sometimes what Zoom does is it degrades the resolution because it doesn't really realize that you're trying to share your screen. It's just thinking that it is a camera. Uh, and it is this common issue that uh, if you're in the Ecamm Live uh, Facebook group, then there's this common question that comes up all the time about resolution in Zoom. Uh, so one of the things that I uh, was attractive to me about Vivo Meetings is the fact that it has got this little toggle to allow you personally to just pick the resolution you want. Uh, and I'll come into some limitations of that a little bit later on. But that was also another compelling reason for me to take a look at this. So with that said, I'm going to go through some of these settings because as I started looking at some of the other features, uh, there was a number of other things in here that I thought are really neat implementations uh, that are just great from a meeting point of view. So let's just start then uh, with going through some of these settings. 
And by the way, this is another common thing that I get uh, when people book coaching calls with me is, uh, you know, where, how do I turn this thing on or off in Zoom? And certainly Zoom settings have become quite bloated these days. So it's good to have uh, a much more simpler uh, sort of effect, <laughs> a simpler list, I should say, of, um, of settings in here. So I won't go through all of these. As I say, this is not intended to be a full tutorial, but basically when you log into your uh, Vivo Meetings account on the desktop or indeed on the web, uh, the settings are going to look the, uh, the same there. And you've got all the usual stuff here, you know, two-factor authentication, time zone, notifications, account settings. I should say that when you go into each of these, uh, you know, it's not just lists and lists of stuff. They're all contained pretty much, you know, within the space of this small window. So you're not overwhelmed with settings. But I'm going to start here, though, with audio and video settings. Um, exactly what you'd expect. So we've got the microphone input. I've got my roadcaster set there. You can see that as I'm talking, the level's going up and down. Uh, we've also got the uh, the speaker there. So you can just select those just as you would just select your mic and speak it in other platforms. Uh, we've also got noise cancelling. It's very easy to turn that on and off. Uh, another thing too, uh, you know, I've got to keep relating this back to Zoom because this is, you know, the, the obvious comparison. Uh, the Zoom audio settings are also something that are becoming you know a little bit more uh, extensive these days um, and uh, that is on the one hand potentially a good thing on the other hand uh, it can lead to confusion i would say 90 percent of calls that uh, are booked with me when people book a consultation is uh, generally audio issues uh, rather than video or anything like that and it is because of the complications that come with uh, with audio uh, so here you've got the option to uh, just toggle on or off noise cancellation and fi filter out the background noise. I personally leave that off because I just manage all this in my studio space with my ro roadcaster and my audio setup. Uh, next, you've got this option to toggle on uh, to hold down the space to temporarily unmute. Again, common with other platforms as well, but this is where you just activate this. Uh, and then you've simply got this option here to uh, either flip your display or have it the, the way that everyone else will see it. So I always have this one checked. I just want to see it as everyone else is going to see it uh, i'm used to looking at myself in the uh, in the screen you know when i'm uh, making videos and so on uh, so i prefer to uh, just have it looking like that some people prefer to have it sort of flipped so that it is effectively a mirror image so that it's more familiar it looks like they're looking in a mirror uh, i prefer to leave that uh, just like that now, one thing you can do in here is change the camera, uh, and you'll notice that I've got my Ecamm Live virtual camera. So if you are an Ecamm Live user, um, if you are on the uh, current beta, um, then for sure you will have the virtual camera just show up there. If you are not yet upgraded and uh, you know, this likely <laughs> within, I would say, a few weeks of me making this video, the Ecamm Live virtual camera will just show up in there. However, if you are on the regular version of Ecamm and you don't see it in there, um, then I'll leave a link to some uh, code or I'll leave a snippet of code down in the description, which is something you just need to drop into the uh, into the terminal. But actually, this is going to be a thing of the past. Uh, the Ecamm Live virtual camera will just show up there for everyone uh, because they've changed the way that the Ecamm Live virtual camera uh, works. But basically, when I turn that on, you'll see that now, basically what you're seeing right here coming out of Ecamm is also going into Vivo. I'm just going to turn that back to the regular camera though, just so it doesn't get uh, confusing. Uh, so next up then we've got virtual backgrounds. I'm going to actually skip those. I always just recommend anybody in meetings should not be using virtual backgrounds, whether it is in Zoom, Teams, Vivo meetings, or any platform. Uh, the uh, quality of the uh, keying out of the background and the person is just not there. I always think it's just more of a distraction uh, than anything to have those in. If you are going to have a virtual background, I'd recommend, and you're doing this for a, you know, professionally uh, then you should have a professional green screen uh, and you know like in Ecamm Live we can just have a, a professional quality green screen key uh, and then put any virtual background behind us but I tend to just miss them out altogether on the uh, the actual meeting platforms themselves uh, that said if you do go into here you're going to have you know similar things you can upload your own to them uh, but yeah I prefer to just uh, give those a miss myself uh, next up, we've got uh, some uh, meeting mode here. So this is a really nice feature. I uh, nearly skipped right over there. But this meeting mode is one thing that I think is a great feature in here because uh, I always talk about uh, the sort of process that you go through when you are setting up a meeting uh, and then when people join a meeting and the different levels of access you might want people to have to chat, for example, uh, you know, if it's a, uh, a meeting where everyone knows each other then yes, it's fine for everyone to be able to go in the group chat, maybe DM each other as well. However, if you're doing a public event where it is people who potentially are complete strangers, you don't want them to just be able to direct mes message people who happen to be in the meeting as well. There's a whole load of sort of privacy concerns and things like that around that. Uh, one of the things that I like about uh, here, though, is we've got these four distinct modes. 
And so let's just go through these because it's a really great way of setting up meetings uh, so that you know the sort of format of them in advance. So if I go into this one, uh, we've got the first type, which is conversation collaboration mode. Basically, this is what you're going to consider as you know a regular meeting that you would have been used to scheduling uh, always. So ideal for smaller groups, team meetings, daily stand-ups, and so on. So basically, this is the critical thing here. Um, all participants can be heard joining the meeting uh, unmuted as a default. All participants have full access to turn on their webcam, they can share their screen, they can upload a document, uh, present a document, use whiteboard, uh, and use text chat. So basically, it's a regular meeting, anyone can do uh, everything. Obviously, as the host, you have control over this, but basically, that's the sort of default. Uh, the next one, though, is this classroom and Q&A mode. Um, and this is a slight different, we've got slightly different uh, permissions here. So although all participants can join the meeting, uh, they're muted when they come in as a default, which is, uh, you know, how I always recommend setting up your meetings. And all participants have access to they can activate their ha their webcam and they can raise their hand um, but only moderators will be able to share their screen upload and download a document uh, present and navigate through a document and use the whiteboard and use the text chat so it's just a different level of permissions whether you are you know one of the, the and by the way the moderators are what you would consider to be co-hosts so you've got host and co-host uh, they call co-host moderators which actually makes a lot of sense from a terminology point of view. Um, so you can just see that it's more set up for a Q&A and a classroom uh, setup. Uh, the next one then is pre uh, presentation and webinar mode. So already we're sort of bridging this gap between a meeting and a webinar because webinars are just built into Vivo meetings. It's not like uh, other platforms, the like where you have to have this as an add-on. It is just built into there. There are some limitations which we'll come on to. Um, but so yeah, here basically when you are in presentation and webinar mode, um, the waiting room is active. The meeting will not begin until the moderator joins. And by the way, you can tweak all of these settings on a meeting by meeting basis as well but these are just some presets all uh, participants uh, may join the meeting uh, and they're all muted and they cannot unmute themselves so just like in a regular webinar people come into the meeting but they can't uh, can't unmute themselves they're they're, they're non <laughs> non-vocal shall we say uh, and then we have the uh the there's no announcement so there's no audio that comes through and only the moderators or the host the co-host uh, will be able to activate their webcam share their screen and do everything it's basically a webinar mode uh, the last one then is this one that is called focus mode uh, and this is slightly different so the features are um, all um, participants can come in they can't unmute themselves um, they do have access to activate their webcam and raise their hand but only moderators will be able to share the screen upload a document and use the white uh, the uh, the whiteboard and so on uh, chat mode so the participants can only chat with the moderators so that is somewhere sort of in between I guess a webinar and the sort of classroom so just a slightly different level What's really great, though, is although you've got these presets and you can go in and uh, make adjustments to this when you set up your meeting, you can specify what type of meeting it is. Uh, the great thing, though, is that you can actually just switch the type of meeting part way through, which means that rather than having to go through and you know toggle on a load of different settings on or off or whatever, you could start in a webinar mode. Let's say you want to do a, uh, a workshop where you're doing a, a main presentation and then you're switching into a Q&A section afterwards. Well, you could start out in webinar on presentation mode uh, and then, you know, partway through, after you finish the bulk of the content, maybe you want to switch it into a classroom mode where people can then come on quest, uh, camera uh, and start asking questions. And so uh, I just really like this feature because it has got this idea of these distinct modes. And also, of course, this is something that's not possible in Zoom is to start with a webinar and then migrate it over to a regular meeting, whereas in here you can just make that switch. So I really liked that as a feature. I'll just quickly uh, jump through some of these other ones. So we've got a waiting room. Uh, you can have hold music in the waiting room as well. So if you want to add that in, although I think that is one of the pro features, you can decide whether you want to have people, uh, you know, the... The, the chimes, the sound effects when people come in or not. Uh, and then you've also got this separate option here for a moderator pin. So this is when a um, uh, a co-host is going to join the meeting. You can have them join with a separate pin rather than uh, having the meeting open to everyone. They can just uh, get themselves in. And some other things here. I'll come to recording and live streaming. So I mentioned this earlier. There is an option to stream. So you can stream to YouTube. Uh, you can actually stream to uh, the Vivo Meetings platform itself and then embed that on your site. Um, and then you can also stream to any RTMP key. So if you've got the RTMP URL and the stream key, you can drop that in. So you could technically be streaming from here to anywhere as well. 
They've also got different layout options, which are very clear. You'll notice by, uh, as well, as I've been going through here, uh, you know, whilst we've got this list on the side, this is the extent of the settings. And as we've been going into each one, you'll notice there isn't a big, huge, long list. So it is actually very easy to go through these settings and just see exactly what's what, and you're never really going to get lost in terms of where something is uh, activated from. Now, uh, if we look at the recording layout options, uh, it's very easy to select these. You can also do it during the meeting as well. Uh, we've got the preferred layout for audio and video recordings and live streams. So we've got gallery view, we've got the speaker down the uh, speaker in the, the, the side there, and then the gallery down the left hand side, uh, or the speaker only, uh, and then preferred recording and streaming layout when someone is presenting. Uh, so if you're, you know, somebody's on spotlight or presenting a screen share or whatever, uh, then you've got a few different options uh, there as well. So you can just choose how you want uh, this to be. But what we'll see is you can also change that during the meeting as well. Um, so those are just a few of the settings, but I mentioned this thing about resolution and uh, this was over in here in audio. Uh, here is, uh, it's just flicked out my camera. Let me just put that back to the other one for a second. Uh, here's where you're going to set your uh, your actual camera. But if I come over into the meeting and I'll show you this specific resolution uh toggle that I was talking about. So let's go back over into the meeting because a lot of the things that I've just talked about there, um, you're going to see in here as well. So for example, if I come down to uh, where are we down here, the more uh, we've got some settings in here. So if I click on settings, uh, then it's going to bring up some settings for this meeting itself. And this is going to look very similar because now you can see that we've got uh, that camera. So I can change the camera for this specific meeting. Uh, we've got the same things with the Rodecaster there. The uh, chat message notifications is an additional one that's in here that you can toggle on. Um, but you can also then see we've got this option for resolution. And this is where you can change this from standard definition to HD, uh, 720p to full HD uh, 1080p uh, and this is the feature that as I say I just really like the fact that it is so easy it's so clear you don't need to be on a specific plan with vivo meetings to activate this it is available to everyone uh, there is one thing to say about this though um, you're always going to be at the mercy of your internet connection and so uh, it's whilst it is you know a feature that you can turn on or off just as you know your audio signal could be lost uh, so can your resolution be degraded by a poor internet connection so it's not going to mean that you're going to get this uh, guaranteed resolution uh, regardless you know even if you are on dial up or something like that uh, but it is something that you're in control of as i say and this is something that is different to zoom where you have to go through all of these little hoops to uh, to activate the group hd as it's called uh, but even then if you're not doing certain other things like having your your zoom window in full screen and, and so on there's all these other little hoops that you have to do to uh, have to jump through to get it to activate. Uh, so I will just say, though, that once again, you know, it's not a guaranteed. It's basically going to be dependent on uh, resolution and so on. But that is just something that I like. But also in this settings here, I've talked about virtual backgrounds. I'm going to skip over that. Uh, but here is where we've got the meeting mode. And this is where you can simply switch between those different modes. So at the moment, we've just started this in a regular conversation and collaboration mode. Uh, but let's say that I wanted to switch this up and make it into a webinar. Uh, well, I would be able to just click on that there uh, and then click on save. And then suddenly now uh, you'll see that I've gone full screen because we are now in webinar mode. Uh, and now when I look at my other devices that are uh, also so logged into this meeting uh, I'm basically front and center for them because we've now switched this up into a webinar uh, let's say that we've done the webinar portion now and we want to go back to a, uh, a regular meeting so uh, maybe we're going to go to classroom mode uh, so we can click in there I think that's a great feature to just be able to switch in and out from uh, from one to the other like that um, if we were, uh, if I did have streaming activated, I didn't activate it here, but we would be able to control that from there. Uh, we've got recording. There is also AI transcripts on the highest tier. I'll talk about the tiers in a moment. Uh, but there, when you record, as well as getting the recording, you also get a transcript plus an AI generated uh, meeting summary as well. One other thing about sharing, uh, I like the fact that you can share your screen, uh, obviously in the same way that you're used to, but they've also made it really easy to share an additional camera. So if you want to just add in one of your other cameras, uh, you can just come and grab one of them. I'm probably going to share the wrong one, but I'll just pick uh, any one of these. How about, uh, how about this one? Let's just try. 
We'll see which one. Well, that's my face cam, isn't it? So there you go. If let's, I mean, it probably wouldn't have the exact same uh, shot, <laughs> but he can see that I'm just bringing in another camera. Uh, so it might be you want to use like a top-down shot or a different angle or whatever, but nice to just be able to quickly and easily add in that extra camera angle if you wanted to. Obviously, personally, I would do all that with, uh, with eCam and just set up my scenes accordingly. Uh, the other thing then is in the camera, you can obviously turn your camera on and off. I like the fact that when you do choose your camera, it does actually pull in a preview of all of them. So you can see, uh, you know, which camera it is that you want to select. Uh, I want to uh, select, uh, let's go back to this one. Um, and then you've also got things like reactions and so on. Uh, as I say, this is all pretty self-explanatory. If I go into the participants, uh, you'll see that you've got the more next to each one. So you can uh, pin somebody. Uh, you can also spotlight. So if I click spotlight, I'm now on spotlight for everyone. So I can see that I'm full screen over there for them. I could spotlight somebody else. Um, you can also take somebody into a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So if you were a moderator or a co-host, uh, you know, if somebody was having te technical difficulty, uh, then you could just click on that person and just pull them straight into a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I won't demonstrate that right now, but that's what that's going to do. Uh, or you can send someone to a waiting room or just remove them like that. Um, all fairly standard stuff really uh, and then you've got the uh, the chat function and you can choose here um, who can chat with who now that thing of those different meeting types this is where it's just going to apply these presets so for example I would recommend if you're in a public meeting where you all know one another uh, then it's fine for everybody to be able to chat with everybody um, however if you're in a more uh, public setting where you know maybe people have just joined they don't know each other you don't really want people to be able to DM each other um, because people might just be getting unwanted attention that way so uh, you can uh, change those in here and as I say these are part of these broader you know four different meeting type presets but you can always go in and change these uh, yourself so uh, again and just a nice uh, little feature there then uh, a couple of other things uh, we've got the different views here that we've already talked about uh, it's actually put me in spotlight so what I'll do is I'll just come back to this one and you can see that that little crown there if I just tap on that it's going to remove the spotlight from me uh, and I'll close this down I said I'll talk about some of the pros and cons and one thing that I will say as a you know this may or may not be an issue for you, uh, but there is just sort of one primary window. Uh, there isn't an option to have a completely separate window like you have with Zoom. That's something that I do actually use quite heavily. So when I'm doing virtual webinars and workshops, I do this thing, which is really a non-standard practice, but I will pin a person to a second uh, window in Zoom, and then I'll kind of use a screen share to pull them out of that bring them back into ecamm and then feed that back into the zoom so that's something that's technically not quite possible with this so uh yeah if that is something that is of interest to you or that you do need to do is to have you know two separate windows uh, then you can't quite uh, quite do that with this uh, but the other views though uh, we've got the different gallery view you can show yourself or hide yourself so hide self view this is the equivalent of that if I turn that one off you can see that uh, you just disappear if you don't want to be watching yourself uh, and then you can change the page size so you control how many people are in the actual uh, in the frame so the maximum being 25 but if you've got you know a smaller group you can adjust that um, and then you can also just come into here have the uh, this one with the the main speaker view and the uh, the gallery down the side or the gallery down at the bottom at that there is full screen view at there as well now as I said at the beginning this isn't going to be a complete full tutorial but hopefully this is just giving you a bit of an insight and you can see it's pretty user friendly if you've used any other meeting platform before then uh, this is not certainly going to be a huge departure from that um, and you will have seen also from the settings uh, fairly intuitive to go through those as well as I say you can find a link in the description to go and try it out but obviously you're going to want to know more about the pricing so let's take a look at that shall we and if you go over to their website using that link in the description uh, click on the pricing section uh, then you will be able to see the uh, different tiers that are available uh, by the way there are some monthly tiers but uh, and you you can obviously go annual as well but do check out the lifetime deals as well so clicking on here is going to give you a number of options where it's basically just one payment for lifetime access so certainly go ahead and look at those as well but let's just go back to the regular um, plans that they've got here as well uh, if you think about this compared to uh, you know zoom then uh, this is going from basically 250 a month uh, up to $18 a month which actually when you look at the $18 a month package uh, for all that you get for that is very cost effective compared to uh, you know a regular zoom plan uh, never mind you know how cost effective these are at just 250 a month for this uh, lower level plan uh, and 
I talked about, you know, who this is right for and who it isn't right for. Um, well, if we take a look at, for example, the basic plan, uh, in fact, let's just go and look at, you can find up here, uh, there is, or further down actually, sorry, full plan comparison. Uh, it's worth taking a look at this more in-depth look here. And let me just zoom in this for you. Uh, if you look at the um, participant capacity, for example, on the basic plan, uh, well, it's 12 people maximum. Now, of course, that might not work if you're in, uh, you've got big teams. But actually, if all you're doing is, you know, one on one coaching calls, or maybe small group calls or whatever, then a 12 participant max is uh, actually going to be fine. So uh, that's what you get on that $250 a month plan. Uh, and then up to pro, you've got 300 participants. Uh, let's look at what these different things are here. So includes webinar. So the webinar feature is available on all of those plans. Um, lots of ticks here across all of them. So they're pretty consistent here. Uh, so I'm just going to go down, uh, not much differentiation, uh, file transfer, not available on the basic, but it is on the others. So if you want to be able to upload files, then that is another little uh, difference there. Custom hold music, if that's important to you, that's on only the plus and the pro plans uh, coming down a bit further. Uh, this is an important one potentially for you. AI transcription, that is a pro feature. And then coming down uh, for enhanced security options, that's uh, basically end-to-end uh, -end encryption that is on the plus and the pro. I would probably argue that those are, you know, essentials. So I'd be looking at one of these two plans myself personally. Um, and then the custom branding as well uh, is a way that uh, when you send out your links, you know, it can have your logo and things like that on it as well. Uh, and then the other thing was the streaming services. So uh, YouTube streaming is plus and pro plan only. Um, user management, and uh, not that one, sorry, I'm reading the wrong line, this one, live streaming to up to 10,000 participants. Uh, that is the one where it is going basically to their uh, Vivo meetings portal, and then you can embed that on your site. Uh, that is a pro feature as is the, uh, the drive storage uh, recording is available on plus and pro. So for me uh, personally, I think the, uh, the plus upwards, is the most compelling uh, package and then it's really just a case of whether you need uh, those added features of the live streaming and ai transcripts as to whether you go to the uh, the pro uh, level package but just once again uh, the pricing of those is as uh, on their website they do also run offers from time to time as well uh, and certainly definitely check out um, those uh, lifetime deals as well because that could be a very cost effective way uh, to get this on a as a long-term uh, uh, a long-term solution with no ongoing monthly cost. So I hope you found that interesting and useful. And if you do want to check it out, then be sure to use the link that is in the description. I'll leave a link to some other videos related to online meetings and uh, tech mastery over there on the right-hand side. Uh, thanks as always to my channel members as well. I really appreciate your support. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.